Earlier this year, Joe sat down with the legendary author Margaret Atwood ahead of her latest book, Burning Questions, Essays, and Occasional Pieces. Their wide-ranging conversation was conducted before a leaked initial draft majority opinion published by Politico that would overturn Roe v. Wade. Atwood addressed that bombshell in a piece for The Atlantic entitled, I Invented Gilead, The Supreme Court is Making It Real. I thought I was writing fiction in The Handmaid's Tale. Joe spoke with Margaret about a number of issues, from the war in Ukraine to the influence of the far right on society. Here now is that conversation. I wanted to ask you about the time period uh, that your essays cover, 2004 to 2020. I try to explain to my children uh, how boring our life was. Uh, I was born <laughs> basically in, in a middle class family in the middle of uh, the post-war world. and. You know, my children have been through a couple of economic crashes. They've been through 9-11. Uh, they've been through a pandemic. You write about all of this, uh, and um, it's, it's hard to explain to them uh, just how tumultuous the last 20 years have been in the context of no. our own lives. That, that's true, but, but we, had a, we, we had a kind of rest period um, but it was preceded by the Depression and, um, and then World War II, which was, was horrific. And I have to say, don't underestimate Russia. Um, so, uh, and, and then we had the 50s, which was boom time. And, and we invented a lot of vaccines because before that period, there were all these diseases that just ripped through and and quarantine was normal. So a lot of the stuff that's been happening feels normal to me, but not for anybody younger. For anybody younger, it feels abnormal. Like what has happened? Somebody said when Trump got elected, a young person said, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. <laughs> and I said, well, no, it's not. <laughs> it can get much worse. <laughs> yeah, there, there are one of the things uh, that was so disorienting to me, and you write about it being disorienting to you, about us walking through uh, this this strange land of post truth. Um, and I've, I've been struck since the Ukrainian, uh, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, began, uh, how um, perhaps there has been a, a return uh, to some basic standards of truth in the West, in the United States, across Europe, and places like Hungary. I agree. And uh, we're seeing an uptick for liberal democracy again. Um, after a lot of eye rolling and people saying it doesn't work, um, what's the alternative? Well, we're getting a good look at it, and people shouldn't loosely throw around the word tyranny without knowing what that really means. So the other thing that I lived through was the Cold War, which went on for quite a while, and I was in behind the Iron Curtain during that. and. Uh, and whatever we have in the liberal de democracies now is nothing close. And we're seeing a big shutdown in Russia right now. We're, we're seeing the, uh, the press being censored. We're, we're seeing very heavy-handed control of news. Um, but again, we revert to Orwell. There, there is truth. And, and if there isn't any truth, it's just a ca case of who's got the biggest megaphone. So it is the job of the media to try to find out the truth and to communicate it. And you, 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 you say and uh, tell the truth. Uh, you call yourself a screaming optimist. It's one of the things that one of the very few things that uh, my wife is irritated by me about. She thinks I'm a bit too Pollyannish at time, at times. But you say that you are a screaming optimist. Do you remain a screaming optimist even now? Well, what's the alternative? <laughs> Right. So either you have to, either you have to have hope, in which case you do something, or you don't have any hope, in which case you do nothing. You just say it's no use. So uh, I would rather um, take an optimistic position. Uh, you also have to be realistic. You have to look at what you're actually dealing with. Um, but unless you have unless you have hope, it gets worse.
It seems to me in, in, in reading these essays and, and, and following you, it seems uh, that you ask some of the questions uh, and ask some of the questions during uh, the Me Too uh, movement uh, that started in 2017 that I often hear from my wife. Uh, and and it, you, you ask the question, why have accountability and transparency been framed as antithetical to uh, women's rights? And it was Mika has asked the question before, uh, since when did due process and the search for truth uh, become something that we women should be fearful of? Explain that. You know, we should not be. And, and as, I, as I've been saying, truth is now having an uptick. We are, we are seeing a return to the idea um, that, you, that you have to base your, your statements and actions on, on something real. And the people involved in the high-profile cases like the Weinstein, the Epstein, and the, and the Cosby did that. You know, the reporters went for the truth. They went for the documents. And there were trials. You know, we, we got to we got to hear the evidence. We got to hear the case, um, and that is what we mean by um, the dem that democratic value, which is also in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Let's hear the evidence. Let's hear um, what people have to say about what actually happened. So that's what all that was about. But I, I think we're moving away from that uh, now because we've had a good look at the alternative. We've had a good look at the censorship and and spinning that's been going on uh, behind. We won't call it the Iron Curtain. We'll call it the, the Putin Curtain. Try saying that fast. Yeah, but, 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 but when you when you say that accountability and transparency has been framed as antithetical to women's rights, it, it speaks of an illiberalism on the left. Uh, we've seen an illiberalism on the right, uh, sure. and 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 I, I, I'm just wondering: do, do you think we're moving through that stage where uh, liberal democracy, uh, where where rationality, where questioning hard truths, even when they're uncomfortable to whatever side we're on, uh, perhaps may be getting a bit of a comeback. I certainly hope so. Um, I, I, I see America drawing together at least around the Ukraine issue. Um, but again, I, I think America got dozy. I think it, it took for granted its number one position and started fighting, um, started a lot of infighting. And uh, quite frankly, you can't afford that. So let me draw a little circle for you. Draw a circle. Up at the po top, you put tyranny. Up at the bottom, down at the bottom, you put chaos. And to the and through the middle, you put liberal democracy. And that's essentially the happiest place to be because <laughs> nobody should. Yeah, uh, for something you said. So then you put some arrows going up, both on the left and the right, towards tyranny. And you put some arrows going down on the left and the right towards chaos. And all of those are demonstrable from history. So where you want to be is hold the middle. Unfortunately, the middle is the place where both sides shoot at you. Yeah, one of your one of your speeches uh, that that are uh, reprinted in, in this collection of essays uh, was "We Hang by a Thread." It was a speech you gave on October nineteenth, two thousand sixteen. It was twenty days before the election of of Donald Trump, and you said uh, during this campaign we've seen an outpouring of misogyny, not seen since the witchcraft trials of the seventeenth century. And I am curious because uh, you know we we. We're all asked this question so often, uh, how are we doing? How we, how's America doing? And my question to you is, five, six years after uh, you gave that speech, are we still hanging by that thread? Have we come out on the other side in some ways uh, better than you expected, or, or are we uh, still hanging by that thread? I would not say that we um, have come, come out of it in a shining form, and I'm looking at some of the laws that are being uh, passed in various states there. I'm thinking of, of Florida just recently. Uh, I'm thinking of Texas. 
So, um, so no, I, I, I don't think so. But, but it may be so that um, people might be coming awake to the fact that they, they need to um, get it together, um, read the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, stop um, picking on people for being different and honor the idea of democracy which means that if you're a citizen, you should be able to vote.